thank you for joining us for another episode of Humming Fools. I am one of your hosts, Kyle Stuk, and I am joined by my co-host and French friend and occasional spooner, Noah Bosley. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> Happy to have you here, Noah. But we are not alone today in the studio, and also we are not liars. Last episode, we said that we were going to have an interview. And we actually do this Something time. went according to plan. <laughs> what a fantastic day. We are joined by the TJ Williams. How's it going? TJ, it is going better now that you are here. <laughs> How is your day going? Uh, great. It took extra long to put my 17-month-old son down. Oh, dang. I have no empathy because I have no concept of what it would be like to look after another person. Yeah. I'm sorry. No, it's it's great. It's how fine. how long does it normally take? Um, it depends. I mean, the whole routine is uh, could take an hour. Really? So, yeah. Oh my gosh! Tonight I I, br- I was showering him and I brushed his teeth at the same time. Really saved some time. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's great. That's great. That is the question. This has nothing to do with art, but just me being curious. <laughs> at what age must the child stop? having you brush their teeth? At what time must they take up the no mantle? Idea. I don't know. You I don't, don't think know. anyone knows. Okay. I think, I think I feel like that people just feel it out. It's like, well, I guess you're good. <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea. I feel like the kid decides, like, hey, I'm going to brush my own teeth today. Hey, yo, mama. Yeah. I'm going to brush feel, my own teeth. I feel that we are still very far away from that. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what? 17 just, months? <laughs> just observing, yeah. No, so we're not anywhere close. Yet. No, yeah, it's, we're not there. <laughs> well, when you get there, will you send me a message? No. Oh, you have to say it. No. I'm not going to remember. <laughs> I'm not going to remember that. All right, I'll just check it. That's fine. I'll yeah. just check it. It'll mm-hmm. keep me close to you. TJ, before we get started, slash starting ourselves off, would you just give our fine uh, audience a little bit of a sample of who you are, uh, what you do, and um, I guess that's it. I was, I was kind of setting up for a third thing, you know, comedy is rule of threes, but uh, I got nothing. So just those first two. Two is good. Who, who I am and what I do. That's right. Okay. Um, well, I'm TJ. We know that. <clears throat> um, I am a dad. We've kind of covered that too, I guess. Mm-hmm. But uh, I've been writing music and been around music for much of my life. Um, I started as a drummer when I was 10. And didn't really start playing guitar or singing until late in high school and into college. But uh, I think of myself as a songwriter, and that's that over the years that has become something that I've started to really think of as um, less less as performance and more as an art. Mm. Um, I really uh, my favorite part of it is just making music, making songs, and putting them together. And so, uh, so you know, over the years, I've I've built up a repertoire of songs and um, gotten better and better at at writing and then uh, now I do some solo stuff Um, I've uh, got a band called Trees and Houses that is made it's like a normal band except we have a guy that paints named Samuel Gray and we try to take a song and or a concept in the song and Sam will paint to that and we'll just kind of talk about it and so it's it becomes a uh, becomes a really cool dialogue with the audience and especially with people that come up afterwards and and just kind of share with us what they experienced and what they saw um but it's it's really cool to see how um how a song and how a painting together can come to life even more when you when you're complementing the visual and the audio um and so so yeah that's that's what i do mm. Very well said. You are a songwriter. It was beautiful. 10 out of 10 would listen to again. <laughs> Going off the uh, the pairing of, uh, you know, the painting and the song, I, I in getting ready for this episode, I listened to another interview that you and Sam and... Yeah. Uh, who, who else? Uh, there's a, uh, another singer in the group. What's her name? Uh, Natalie Sneed. Natalie. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you guys were all kind of Very talking. Talented. Yeah. And um, you kind of mentioned that that painting aspect is kind of being a strength, something that you thought kind of helped you guys uh, stand mm-hmm. out because it is mm-hmm. a it's a unique pairing. Uh, it's not just oh I went to a you know a concert. It's like oh it's more of like an experience. They're mm-hmm. seeing something. How did you guys kind of start that I- idea of pairing those two things together as like a performance? Yeah, well, I think we became friends first and. Um, Really, I really loved, you know, I just loved his art, loved what he made. It, it inspired me. And, and we just kind of started thinking about uh, 
that that concept of music and art it came really naturally um so that's i mean that's really how it started um i think that it's it brings a uh it brings a really unique element to the stage where typically when you go to a sh what to go to a concert um you know you're there to hear a band and you're there to get this really energetic in your face experience um when you go to uh, to view a, a piece of art or a painting, um, it couldn't be more different than that. Um, mm -hmm. So it's been really cool to see how how sometimes people are more into the art, you know, but the music is kind of the supplement and, and vice versa. Um, but but you have people who are coming for a show to drink a beer and hang out, coming up at the end and asking about an art and trying to inter or to interpret an art piece. And you, you just feel like these two worlds are clashing. Um, and so I do think it's a strength. I think it's, uh, it brings uh, something unique uh, to the table. And, and so, yeah. The first time that you guys did it, the first time you treat and houses came together, or at least just you and Sam, were you afterwards affirmed like, oh, that was cool, this was good, or were there any growing pains with doing that, or what was kind of like that first time like? Um, gosh, I'll have to remember. The first time I, we did it, I guess we did it at a coffee shop, and I think we actually got a good amount of people out there for it for the first time, and I think we were pleasantly surprised. Um, I think it was unique enough that it was going to be intriguing to people regardless, mm. so that was good. <laughs> It's always nice when you don't have to try too hard and people mm -hmm. are into yeah. it. So um, I think that my favorite part was was that we tried it the first time. Okay, let's take a song. Let's talk about the song at some point during the show. And and then at the end, people came up and they were talking about, asking about the painting and telling, even just kind of offering up to us their interpretation of what it means. And, um, and so we pretty quickly figured out that that, that kind of end of the show dialogue um, it was really valuable and something that we've always really liked um, and, and maybe even has caused us to prefer smaller venues because of that, just because we can, we can really talk to people and hear what they think and hear, and hear what they interpret and what they see in the music and in the songs and, so, um, and in the paintings. And so, uh, so yeah, that was, it, was a, it was a win from the beginning for yeah, sure. I feel like that's really something that benefits from the smaller crowd and smaller yeah, venue, for sure. just that, that connection yeah. with people. I'm curious about something because we talk about this a lot, but what, whenever we work on a project, we're like, mm -hmm. regardless of people like liking this or not, we're going to be doing it. And so it, like, yeah, it doesn't you matter get, how many You have to get to that reach. point. Yeah. yeah. And so I was wondering mm -hmm. if you guys sort of had that, that conversation when we started out. We're like, you know what? It, it, even if it doesn't work for anyone else, we're going to like it. And, yeah. and th that's all that matters. Yeah, for sure. When we first started, we, we just kind of committed to doing it. We did it at the same coffee shop every Friday night for like, I don't know, like maybe 10 or 12 weeks or something like mm -hmm. that. Um, and at the time, I had enough songs kind of built up and, um, you know, it, it was it was a lot. It was pretty exhausting, but it was kind of like, you know, we learned a lot through that, but we felt like at the beginning, just getting some reps and seeing how it goes and um, trying to tweak it along the way. Mm -hmm. um, so, so yeah, it definitely became, it became something that, uh, we we're going to do it. Um, and we've learned maybe how to, how to do it more effectively, sure. especially just, I mean, little things, just like learning, learning how to, how often to play in your own town versus mm -hmm. other places. And, um, so that, you know, that we figured out certain venues and environments that are better than others, but, um, but yeah, it's like not really a question whether or not we're going to keep doing it. Yeah, it's just kind of great. a matter of where and when. So, yeah. Hmm. So you mentioned figuring out which, you know, venues work better than others. Were, was there ever any strong, like, man, that, that just sucked kind of gig? Or is it more just like a, <laughs> eh, like, that wasn't the best spot because it was tiny. I know, like, oh, I don't know how far back it was, but I know that you guys had one show where it just, the space was a lot smaller than what mm -hmm. you thought. And I remember watching the video and it was like, you all were cramped yeah, that was right really next fun. to each other. But yeah. That's yes. We play, we played at a, uh, at a brewery and, uh, or it wasn't a brewery. It was a tap room. Um, 
and it was, I mean, infinitely smaller than what we thought. We mm -hmm. came with the sound system and the full band. Um, and our, my drummer's name is Taylor Hall, and I had to like convince him to stay because he was like, "Dude, I'm not. This is way too. This is way too. Like, we took up the whole room just just with us." Uh, um, and somehow 30 or 40 people showed up and packed in there and it was, it was great. It was fun. Um, yeah, I don't know. There, there have been, um, yeah, there's definitely, there's definitely a show we did recently, uh, where, uh, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say who or, or where it was Just because fine. it's local, but, mm -hmm. but it was, uh, it was a, a group of, uh, college students and, um, and it ended up being a really fun night, but it was just cracking us up the whole time because there were, uh, they threw this, this kind of house party thing and it was a part of an organization on campus. And, um, and we got there and we were like, there are no, uh, there's literally no adults here. <laughs> <laughs> For the first time we were all like, man, we're kind of old. I think we're the oldest people here. I think if anything happens, we're going to be responsible for this. <laughs> so, hey, you stop drinking. And they totally, they didn't get it. I, we got up on stage and we were making jokes. We were like, where are the adults? And Did they uh, ask all, you to buy them liquor? <laughs> no, they were, and they were all just like, what are you talking about? We're adults. And they were like, no, you're not adults. <laughs> Bunch so, of children. Yeah. So, and it, you know, of course it was totally like, uh, there, there had been like no planning once we got there. Um, mm -hmm. They were thinking of having everybody on this like muddy hill that it was just like, it, it was ridiculous. The setup was crazy. <laughs> but, um, but by the end of the night, we were telling people we're like, all right, put the banner over there, you know, put, put the chairs over here. And let, I mean, we, we were totally in charge by the end of the night. <laughs> so, <it was> funny. <laughs> uh, that's great. That, that kind of reminds me, uh, it sounds like a, a venue I remember going back to uh, in, in college. Josh Garrels actually came, mm -hmm. and he was playing at the U of A. Mm -hmm. um, I don't mind saying that it was the U of A that put on this event, and it wasn't. It wasn't good. Um, but <laughs> he, he, it was just kind of like on that that their main like quad area. I don't mm -hmm. know the campus well enough to be more specific, mm -hmm. um, but it was just it was equally funny and sad because Josh Garrels kept going like hey uh, can you mind turning this down or like hey like it's just because it was so loud i held i plugged my ears the whole show because it hurt so bad and you could see in his face he's like man i don't want to be here <laughs> but they paid me yeah. and he's he's reaching out some people are more conservative or like they won't say something if it's bothering them but he kept being like hey man well he did it multiple times and that sound guy was just like i don't know what i'm doing <laughs> I just was like, who, like, it, it's only for music. That's what this, like, gig is. Like, it's yeah. when you think they get it's the only to... thing you're supposed to get right. <laughs> one, job. one job. So, Josh, Not to mention, you'll never listen. But... It doesn't get much more simple than that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's a, he plays the acoustic guitar, he sings, and right. he might have some, some loops. I mean, there's... Yeah. You're not mixing a band, band or anything. It, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can't, if you can't figure that out, man. You should find another uh, profession. Um, mm -hmm. So... <clears throat> Taking it back a little bit, in your, your inter introduction, you talked about viewing, um, you know, what you do as an art form, yourself as an artist. Um, mm -hmm. One of the questions I, I, I want to consistently ask people, because it's something I, I thought about for myself, is, is there a moment when you first kind of owned the classification of artist? Uh, where you're like, I am not, like, because a lot of times you don't even think about it. You just create. But there's, yeah. I feel like the moment where you're like, oh, like, this is who I am. So my question is, did you have that moment? And when you did, when was it? And what was kind of like your own self-reflection reaction to it? It's mm. a good question. Um, Thank you. <laughs> that's what you want to hear, right? That's right. I, yeah. I, I, I've said in the past. Want the answer. <laughs> yeah, I've said know. in the past that I only do this podcast to be affirmed. I'm very <laughs> selfish. No, go ahead, please. <laughs> I don't know if I could point to a moment, but I think that I, I just I just feel that for what I write and and how I write, it's uh, it's. Over the years, it's become clear to me that it's less about the performance of it, and it's more just about the craft and and the final product. And so, I think I just it's just more observational. Um, it's also just kind of knowing myself and my personality. Um, I don't really see myself as someone who um, who would ever step up on a really big stage um, or get on a tour bus 
as a career. Um, and, and not that that's not part of, you know, not that people who do that aren't artists. They certainly are. But I think that that's more performance. And I think that I've just kind of seen in myself that what tends to come out is something that is, uh, is uh, I don't know, it's, it's coming out of out of me, and then it's it's being crafted, and it takes it takes a lot of thought, um, lyrics, sounds, um, the way words sound, all of that is just really important to me. And so when I'm when I'm done with something, it's it, it's more about that that song or that project feeling like it's done and it's been completed and it's been crafted um, than it is about like this is a, a product that I could sell, you know, that's going to sell and that's going to, uh, I'd much rather, I'd much rather write something and put something out there that is, is true and honest and, and maybe even challenging. Um, then I would want to put something out there that a lot of people would want to listen to. Mm. So, hmm. yeah. It, it's interesting that you say it cause that was going to be one of my questions. Again, for this, I go full Facebook slash every platform stalker Dig in, mode. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't like the way it makes me feel, but it gets the job done. And so <laughs> that you say that there was, there was, I think it was on your Facebook. You, you described yourself as a do it yourself guy and you attributed that to, um, why you haven't pursued, um, the whole getting signed approach is, is kind of what you, you framed that as. And so I was, uh, I was interested in how that DIY approach affected um, your music and art and kind of why that resulted in the lack of you wanting to get signed. But it seems like you said that, uh, would, you, would you say that you, you don't know if those two worlds can exist, like being on the tour and putting out something really authentic or, I, I guess I don't even know what my own question is, but... <laughs> Uh, yeah. If if someone came along, let's say like the genie, and was like, "Hey, you can go on the tour, you can get the big record label," would you be hesitant because you'd fear losing that authentic side of it? Or, um, yes, I would be. I would be hesitant. I wouldn't. Uh, it's not that I wouldn't ever do it. Um, I think that I would probably not ever pursue that or do it for very long, um, or ever see it as a career. Mm -hmm. um, partly because I think I think that. At least something I've noticed in myself, um, life, the life that I live, uh, very much influences what I write, and and so I'm very uh, I'm very intentional um, with the kinds of experiences, the kinds of places I put myself in. Um, I love to travel, um, and I can be pretty adventurous, even just with the types of relationships that I pursue and the kinds of people that I put myself around, because I know that. Um, the, you know, the more diverse and maybe even radical that some of those things are, uh, the, the better art I'm going to make because, um, because that's where, that's where it all comes from for me. So I've always thought if I'm sitting on a tour bus all day, um, you know, the glamour of being on stage every night is great, but you, you can't get much Doesn't inspiration good story. from yeah. sitting on a bus all yeah. day. And so, uh, so, so yeah, the, the do it yourself thing. Um, I think I was maybe a little bit more, I'm kind of wondering when I wrote that now. <laughs> but, middle school. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I hope it wasn't that long ago. Um, I, I probably have more of a lofty idea of my ability to, uh, to engineer and mix and master, uh, back in the day. And so I definitely, I value that now. Um, I, I think that there are people that are really good at that and I don't know that I'm one of them. Uh, but I've also learned over the years how to how to really strip down what I'm doing. Um, I really, play, you know, I really prefer playing acoustic. Um, I sold off a lot of my gear so that I could afford really quality acoustic guitars because I felt like that was what that that's what really made my music work. And so, um, so maybe I don't know if it's if it's so much DIY anymore as it is maybe minimalism. That's mm -hmm. that's maybe a, a key thing for my. Uh, for my music and my songwriting style. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, we were, it's funny because we were just talking about this a couple hours ago, but we were talking about how when you're starting to do something, you feel very protective of that project mm -hmm. and you don't want to outsource anything because you're mm -hmm. like, 
whoever I hand it to is not going to feel the same connection mm -hmm. as me to this thing, and they're going to get it wrong, or there's going to be complications and stuff yeah. like that. So it's interesting that you brought that up, because yeah. that's something that the, the deeper you get into something, you're like, man, either I have to strip it down, or I'm going to have to get some You just help. figure out what you're good at, too. Yeah, you know? yeah exactly. And, and I think I'm good at playing acoustic guitar and writing songs and singing. Yeah. And um, if I can keep it that simple, then going into the studio is there's not that much to it, mm. you know, and and it really just depends on how well I perform it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, mm. that is a weird thing about <clears throat> you know the impact that success and exposure can have on the actual work because yeah, someone who you know has again not everyone is this way, but the stereotypical celebrity lifestyle. You said the tour bus, you know, just kind of in this mm -hmm. one area all the time recycling these songs, you know, Bo, Bo Burnham's a comedian, I mean, he has a, a song where he kind of makes fun of country singers who they haven't worked a day of their life on a farm, but they're, yeah. you know, they're writing these songs about like, oh, I've been out working and my boots are dirty and, you know, all this <laughs> stuff, but they don't know because they're on a bus, right. they have like really expensive stuff, and so mm -hmm. it is like you kind of art so personal, and so if you're separated from people or like different experiences and all these things, it's like, where does that come from and it, it, I could see it being uh as a writer I think it's easier for me to to like oh well I you know I'm not on tour really or you know like people I write stuff they digest it but I still live my life so but yeah maybe being on tour like yeah. away from your family I think people think that like oh, I'm gonna get on the tour bus and I'm gonna write I'm gonna have all this time to be creative mm. and I'll bet you so many people are just watching Netflix yeah. Yeah. sleeping and <laughs> I know that's what I would do. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. so that that kind of brings up one of my uh, other big questions of like, what is like the desire for uh, your creativity or for your life to go? Um, do you have a vision of where you'd like to see tree, trees and houses go, mm -hmm. or even your own personal work? Like, mm -hmm. or is it kind of like I really like what it is now to where it's simple and we we do our thing. I kind of want to stay the same and then have my family, have my work, or, I mean, would you like to be paid slash have a career out of being creative if it was able to stay authentic or mm -hmm. how you envisioned it? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, right now, I, I think that it's great to get paid for stuff that you do. That, that's always great. Mm -hmm. um, but I think I think that uh, what I would love and what what I'm kind of envisioning is is that we can we can get to a place where um, where we're more consistently putting stuff out uh, it's kind of a bottleneck I, I write a lot and and so I I always have I mean I literally have in my head like two or three years out of stuff that I'd like to release um, and then that'll you know over time that'll inevitably change because I'll write more stuff and 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 you know some songs will get prioritized over others but uh but it's it, there's a lot of legwork involved in building something like trees and houses as simple as it may seem um figuring out what works and what doesn't and and kind of also just starting to recognize like uh as a songwriter i think i think the breadth of what i want to create can span even even multiple genres and uh but but Trees and Houses is a little more narrow than that. And so um, while I have all these songs that I, I, might, I may have written, uh, there's a few that will fit into the funnel that is Trees and Houses and then figuring out what what is solo stuff. And so um, so anyways, to answer your question, I think what I'm envisioning is is that is that we can get get a more consistent um, rhythm of releasing and and, and putting out music and maybe maybe a few more creative things with how to how to use uh, use art in that as well. Samuel's really diverse. He does more than just uh, um, he does a lot more than just uh, live painting or, or charcoals and stuff like that. Um, but you know, I more again more than I would like to see this become something that's like oh this could be a career. Mm -hmm. uh, I just would love to see uh, see that we we find music and concepts and um, phrases that 
really mean something to people and 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 I would love to see that that it gets out there and that people experience it and can be affected by it um, you know everybody everybody who makes music or create something it's meant to be shared and so um so that's a natural desire and and i have that desire just like anybody else does um mm -hmm. i believe in what i'm saying um and in what i'm feeling when i write these songs and so i want as many people as possible to go through that kind of that emotional and conceptual journey with me so so yeah that's that's i mean i it's probably pretty similar to most people that that create you you're not doing this just so that you can listen to it by yourself tonight mm -hmm. you know yeah. it's like <laughs> you want you want to influence you want to you want to put your thoughts out there you want people to um to hear about it and to talk about it and and you want to contribute something that's interesting and unique and um, inspiring so definitely yeah well, before I ask my next question, I just want to quickly shame Noah for those uh, Facebook uh, <laughs> beeps that, that I heard. <laughs> um, I, TJ was saying such beautiful and elegant things, and it was <laughs> just awful. it was just penetrated by a, that high pitched sound. Do not disturb is a lie. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, um, it's anyway, I'm just joking, Noah. I love you. It could have happened to me as well. Um, going off kind of what you said in the middle, figuring out the. Um, the distinction between trees and houses and your own stuff. Mm -hmm. And as soon as you said that, I kind of, uh, that, that was actually one of my questions because in mm -hmm. figuring out one of the songs that I wanted you to potentially play, I saw that, you know, little home was both on your own Spotify and then also mm -hmm. on trees and houses. Yeah. And I was wondering if, um, you kind of were like, this is what my theme will be. And then this is what trees and houses is, or if it's more like, um, you know, when we can have the group, awesome. And if not, like, I'm going to do my own thing, but I don't mind necessarily sharing those songs. Do you yeah. view them as separate entities or do they kind of bleed into each other? Um, it gets blurry for sure. I mean, everything starts, you know, I, I write a song and then I start thinking about what it is mm -hmm. for quite a while. Um, so, yeah, it's a great example of one that probably initially I thought was probably just one I'll put out on my own um, account and uh you know i didn't didn't so, something i try to filter through with trees and houses is um i really try to have stuff that is less personal um and more um not generic by any means but more uh i don't know something something that that would fit really well in a uh you, that you could pull something visual out of, I guess. Um, I think a lot about the the artistic aspect of it, and so you know some of the imagery in the songs, and um, and especially the meaning behind it. Um, I'm always with trees and houses. That's kind of that's where it narrows a little bit. Is I'm always thinking about you know could this could this be painted, um, and that's not always the case. There's some songs uh, that we've done that that don't conceptually we probably would never put it with a painting we probably would never really talk a lot about the meaning of it um because you know it's, it's not necessarily relevant to a lot of the stuff that we end up talking about but uh but there's just a couple of them that we just for whatever reason we played them live together and it really fit with the group and so it just kind of has always become a part of our live set and so mm. you know it makes sense to put it in there on an album and um little home is in between on that uh it's really two different songs that musically and, and kind of emotionally fit together. Um, but, you know, they don't conceptually, they don't necessarily mean the same thing. And so mm -hmm. I, I wrote the verses to that song and uh and i actually wrote it while i was sitting out on the back porch with uh i don't know 10 or 15 of our friends late one night and i just had the guitar out and i didn't i wasn't i wasn't uh didn't have any words or anything like that at the time but was just kind of plucking around and, and that um that little guitar part came out and so kind of whipped out my phone while, while everybody was talking and recorded it and uh, and so the verses kind of came out of that. And then that chorus was something separate that I'd had. Um, and, and I just put them together and I liked, I liked how they sounded. And I always thought, well, I'll rewrite the chorus and, and make it fit conceptually. And I just never could do it. I liked, um, 
the I, I, something about it, even though it doesn't jump off the page necessarily, something about it was supposed to be together. And, um, and so I kept it. So, and a lot of times when I write songs, I'll write the song, I'll record it, I'll record a demo of it, and, um, and then I'll sit on it for a year, even sometimes longer than that. And um, kind of my, uh, my litmus test has become, if I write a song and I record a demo, and if I can listen to it a hundred times or more within the course of a, a month or so, and I'm still not tired of it, mm -hmm. then, you know, it's probably, it's probably worth kind of keeping on the list. But, um, but yeah, so that's kind of, that's kind of my process. The, so. Yeah, uh, we just had a, our last episode was about <clears throat> finding inspiration, and I'm kind of curious about your process. Uh, do you, I know some songwriters will have the, well, I gotta have the lyrics first and then find melody. Some are flipped and some are just whatever comes. Um, do you sort of just wait for them to hit or do you have times where you kind of have to sit yourself down and be like, okay, I gotta, I gotta make something. And then what, mm -hmm. like, what's your, what's your method? I've tried a lot of different things. Um, but regardless of what I do, it's always a very emotional process. Mm -hmm. And so it, I have to, I have to really believe in, in what I'm writing about or what I'm thinking about mm -hmm. for something to come out for me. Um, I've tried, uh, and, and, and it's been good. It's been a good practice for me, but I've tried, um, writing a song a day. I've gone stretches doing that. Yeah. Oh my um, gosh, dang. <laughs> that's impressive. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's a good discipline. Um, mm. you, but you still have to, if you're not, if you don't have any, you know, inspiration in you, then nothing's going to really come out. But, yeah. um, but I've, I've usually, I'll write a song and, um, a lot of times a whole slew of songs will come out mm -hmm. and if I'll, if I can give myself the time and, and kind of discipline myself over the next week or two, I can, I can crank out five or 10 songs. So, but it's, yeah, it's very emotional for me. I don't, I don't, uh, I don't ever start. You, I don't hardly ever start with like, I don't journal. So I don't start with lyrics. Mm -hmm. Um, and almost always I can point to something around the time that I wrote the song that, um, that influenced it. Kind of triggered it, yeah. Yeah, for sure. That's cool. So, so for, yeah, so what, what it really becomes is something on the guitar or melody as I'm playing starts the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And and the emotion has to be right. That's to kind of like, because I'll quit. If I start writing and something comes out and it doesn't fit like how I'm feeling, um, I know I'm not going to get anywhere. And a lot of times, those, those are the times when I hit a wall and I'm just like, yeah. just put it away and pick it up later. Just wait, yeah. But, um, <laughs> But yeah, so so a melody. Uh, I'm really big on on the tone uh, of different words and how they sound. And so a lot of times I'll start with a word, or even I'll sing a sound, or you know, random words, or even if they're not words, um, and start trying to fit things in um, to to see what I've got to work with. And then at that point, that's my favorite part is when I've got I get a line. Usually it's a part of a chorus. Um, from there, from there, you really feel like you have like you've kind of uncovered something, mm -hmm. and you can start building and molding it out. Um, and so that's yeah, that's cool. that's yeah. usually how it goes. And so it goes, as so they goes, say. Yeah. TJ, you you just were talking about you know the a little home, and so I think it's only uh, you know appropriate that uh, maybe we get a little taste. Okay. Not a little taste. Actually, I want a full taste. I want the whole song. Okay. Um, you, you appear to have brought your guitar. Uh, we weren't. Uh, we weren't prepared. True. We weren't ready for a for a live recording. But uh, if you're game, I say we go for it. If not, we'll we'll just play it, and that'll be on us, um, <laughs> audience members. Just so you know, no judgment. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, you you talked a little bit about the 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 forming of the music. So I think it'd be cool for us to hear it, and then. After we uh, we come back, uh, maybe we can dissect those lyrics a little bit. I Sounds have a good. I have a hint of what the song's about, but I could be totally off. Okay, <laughs> Does that sound good. good to you. Sounds great. Let's, Let's do it. get it.
kindest words and arguments are teaching us how to live. Sometimes we burn, sometimes we Waiting as I grow impatient, the mystery is killing me. Time keeps fooling me. Years I've been wasting on dreams, I'm chasing a fire that was there isn't even wanted more. No answers, a few, and they don't seem. Something the way I've been trained is to always avoid the fight. Oh, mm-hmm. TJ, that was magical. It was uh, my favorite word, tasty, is how I would describe it to other people. (laughs) Thank you for doing that. Um, Of course. I, like I mentioned, want to get a little bit into the uh, lyrics. Um, And as I said, I have an idea, but I'm I'm ready to be shut down, but I'm also ready to be affirmed. We had a whole episode on affirmation critique. I'll take whatever one I get. I would love to, uh, I would love to hear what you think. Fantastic. So, I'd love to hear your ideas. Uh, I don't know when you wrote this song, but I, in trying to kind of, in listening to the lyrics, thinking about your own life, what I know about you, um, you you're, uh, you have a son, as, we, as you previously mm-hmm. mentioned, and you're married. And so uh, one of the lyrics, uh, walls are breathing in and out as we become a little town. I kind of, the way I felt about the song overall was uh, that just kind of like having this feeling of watching a family form and especially like within a house like Mm -hmm. um you know like there's there can be so much history in a home and to where it it starts to even take on its its own life again it's breathing so it's kind of like it a lungs but also like a heartbeat like there's these people in this space um but and so there's a lot of positivity to it but also you know with living with people and, and being humans we're not perfect and so you talk about um the kindest words and arguments teaching us how to live that it's not just all about um happy feelings it's like through failing as a husband or as a wife or you know like a a kid making mistakes it's kind of like you you get to see the realest parts of what it is to be human because by loving you're risking uh and so I, I, I think that's why I really like it. And another lyric that kind of speaks to my theory is like, sometimes we burn, sometimes we give, but love is here despite of it. And so Noah knows I'm a romantic. And so I always, I always <laughs> overthink stuff. And so I'll be like, man, I'm just, I'm sad today because I'm thinking about how I'm going to disappoint my wife. And he's like, stop, <laughs> like you're not even in a relationship. Why are you thinking about these things? But that kind of is like, no matter how great of a person we are, no matter how hard we try, we're going to mm-hmm. fail people. We're going to say hurtful things. Just in a moment, you can slip and you'll just say something. And it may not be like the worst thing ever, but, you know, you're going to fight. Kids are going to, you know, disobey. They're going to whatever. But there's kind of this weird ironic beauty in that because it's a real th- It's a home. And that's what a home is. A home isn't perfection. It's people loving each other despite 
what we do. So anyway, that's what I thought about it, and that's why I really like it, because it's a very simple song in keeping mm -hmm. with your minimalist approach, but mm -hmm. I just, every time I listen to it, I just find it really beautiful and uh, just hopeful of like, oh, like, I want that, like, someday, and so yeah. like, it, I get excited. Yeah. How wrong was I? How uh, not wrong was I? Or, or just, you know, speak words to me. It's your turn now. I think that was a great interpretation. Oh, yeah. affirmed! I loved it. Um... <laughs> No, it's actually a song about death, though. Oh, but, well, no, maybe. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> you got me. It, uh, it was, I actually wrote it four or five years ago, probably. Okay. Maybe even longer than that. So, yeah, I think a lot of what you're saying was definitely in my head. Um, we had a lot, of, we had some friends living with us at the time. And uh, in building community is a big part of our lives. That's, that's something we've always taken really seriously. Um, I kind of mentioned earlier that really uh, it's really important to me the kind of people that I'm around and and that I'm I'm not I'm not just hanging around you know people that are just like me and that are easy to get along with but that I'm uh, that I'm pursuing uh, being a part of you know being a part of a community that challenges me that stretches me and um, especially you know as I think about Fayetteville. Um, uh, a, a good friend of mine uh, says this a lot, but there's two sides to Fayetteville. There's there's the side that many of excuse me that many of us experience that uh, looks really great. It's 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 uh, it's it's good. You know your experience of the the town of Fayetteville is um, positive. But then there's another side, and there's a lot of people that um, their life in Fayetteville is hard and is is filled with trials and challenges. Um, and, and it's a struggle to get by. And so it's just really important to me to experience the whole community of Fayetteville rather than just a piece of it. And I'm not coming up with that. There, there are lots of, uh, really smart and, uh, you know, influential people in, in this town that have influenced me in that way. Um, but I've just, I've just really valued how much that's affected my music. And so when I wrote this song, I had a lot of, I had probably had a bit of a broader, um, vision of, of community and of a home, maybe be, you know, the idea of, of what I experience in my home reflecting, um, the, the place that I live in and the town that I live in. And, and so, you know, I, I, I was, it was kind of maybe a both end. It was like, yeah, I want to fill my house with my kids and my family, but I want to fill my house with, um, you know, with my neighbors and, and by neighbors, like, you know, the people that really make up the town around me and so yeah i didn't even yeah i didn't even think about the the community aspect of that and so yeah. that's really cool and yeah definitely i again you wouldn't have uh, had your son like you said four or five years ago so uh, that's kind of cool too thinking about um your neighbors or even your friends and you know that that community growing um and again like people who are different so there's going to be disagreements you know political you know personal religious whatever mm -hmm. but um, learning and growing through that. So that's cool. G glad to have another perspective on that. And that's yeah. what's cool about songwriting. And I know, I love it. Well, and I, I was just thinking about this. Uh, it's kind of a good example of if, if you write about something that you're connected to, someone else is like, it's going to have to connect to it as well. Exactly. At yeah. some point. That's right. Um, yeah, it's... Uh, where you were talking about the, the country music thing and all that stuff, like I have a whole separate rant about it. But, um, <laughs> if, you, if you write something that's super formulaic, hoping that it'll appeal to the lowest common denominator, it's it's really not going to land anywhere. Like yeah. People are going to consume it, but it's not going to be a matter of, of heart and, and yeah. connection, you know. And so, but if you write something that I may have never experienced, but that you experienced and that you connect to and that you put your, your heart into, then I'm going to feel that. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's so clear, you know, and so evident um, in the song whenever the person wrote it with purpose rather than yeah. just generic. Yep. You want it, you want it to uh, be something that seems small and simple, but that, that can kind of be expansive for people mm -hmm. and it can touch a lot of people. Um, and a lot of times it's just one line. You brought up that line, uh, the walls breathing in and out. And it's one of my favorite lines in that song. Mm -hmm. But but it's that place in the song where clearly, like, we're not just talking about a house, you know, but we're using, 
you know, we're using the imagery of the house to talk about something that's alive. Um, so, yeah. and everybody can kind of, you know, I, th I think, I think when you hear that line, you know, what's being said, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So, and what we just experienced again was someone's reaction to, you know, your music, uh, whether it's your personal stuff or trees and houses, uh, can you give me an example of just like a cool experience where, uh, you know, after the show someone came up and was able to connect and maybe it was a perspective that was different, kind of like just now, like the interpretation was different, but uh, it was something really cool and beautiful, or if it was just, again, someone connecting to what you said specifically. Yeah. Um, well, a really common one is the song, I'll Never Let You See My Face. Uh, there's a line in there, and, and I've gotten more comments on that line than any other line I've written, um, but I'll, I'll say the line in a second, but the, the song is about my grandpa, actually, and his relationship with his dad, and, you know, I have a good relationship with my dad, but the way the song sounds, it sounds like I'm talking about my dad, my mm -hmm. experience with my dad. Mm -hmm. And I think that that relationship is something that a lot of people have carry a lot of baggage. And uh, there's a line in there that's it's just talking about his dad. Um, and it says he died before he was even dead. And it's, it's talking about the, the, the life, you know, what he lived for. He lived for his work. He was a farmer. Um, he was hard on his kids. Um, he was abusive. But he was angry, and and he was he was there, but he wasn't really living anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and that line, for whatever I never, I didn't even think of it when I wrote it. But that I have more people come up and talk to me about that line, um, probably than than any other song. And I just think that um, that that's been that's been really special to see uh, see see a line in a song like that in a show where where someone can kind of sit back and. And, and maybe have a little bit of, uh, uh, I don't know if it's solidarity or camaraderie, and mm. a lot of us get, get pretty screwed up by our families. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it, it's uh, maybe it's comforting to be in a room where, where everybody kind of hears that and goes, yeah. It's not just me. Family can be pretty painful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's the that's coolest thing. Is. Uh, in art is the, is the power of saying like yes like I'm the same or like that mm -hmm. happened to me as well because I think a lot of like no matter how people are it's like you are with yourself the most you're in your own head the most and so sometimes it's like our experiences yeah. we think they're so singular and so to, so to to watch your experience read you know whatever to experience something that says like no like that's happened to me as well and like you're not crazy or you're not dumb or like yes this is painful. It doesn't fix the pain, but it acknowledges it. And so I, I could imagine people who have tough family situations, how that could be really um, encouraging and beautiful. Even if it didn't necessarily happen to you, it's cool that, um, A, that there is something behind it that relates to you, but that mm -hmm. you're able to have those conversations. And I think that's the cool thing is just being able to talk to people. It feels so humbling. It, yeah. you, can, you can be whatever you want in a song, and it doesn't make it not true, mm -hmm. you know. Um, you just have to believe in it, you have to feel it, mm. and have something that's relatable, you know. Mm -hmm. But So, in that relatability, let's get into um, wh what gives you, you know, sustenance. Like what, what, what kind of artists, musics, uh, musics, man, it's going to be another one. Every, <laughs> every episode, what music uh, do you love? Let's get into the specific artists, and if you want to delve outside of music, that would be fantastic. Well, I'm just assuming, but what what fills you up? What what people do you love? When it comes to style, when I think about like uh, I think the style that I fit in best, um, I, I like I look to sorry I'm turning away from Mike. I look to a lot of uh, singer songwriters that the same kind of thing that are that are really simplistic in what they do, uh, but, but are really good at either at playing or singing or both. Um, and so some names that come to mind, Jose Gonzalez, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. is important for me. I've listened to a lot of his stuff. I've, I've really paid attention to his, his guitar playing. Um, he's, he's a classical guitarist, but he's kind of crossed over and become a singer songwriter and is, he's really unique. Um, he, it's it's his playing is what really intrigues me he he plays like a classical guitarist yeah. but he, the simplicity of what he plays is i think what really wins 
um, wins an audience for him. Um, and so it's been really, it's cool to see how he's brought classical guitar into, into the mainstream. Um, and he's done, he's just, he's done a lot of really unique things with the acoustic guitar. So, so that he inspires me and his, he, he's probably one of the big reasons that I've figured out how to, how to do, uh, how to finger pick better and, and how to use alternate tunings. Um, so, and then who else? I started listening to a lot of hip hop lately. Nice. And I've, I've found that, um, there's one guy, I think, oh man. I think it's Quaku Collins. That's what it is, and he he does some really unique stuff. He's got he's got a mixture of styles that kind of come out in his in the musical side of what he does. He's he's um, he's rapping, but he's he's doing uh, he, he's he's doing a lot with the tone um, and the pitch of his voice. And I think I think more than anything, he's just really intriguing to me as a as a uh, artist. He's one of those guys that I'm like. You're you're putting out something that is um, is so uh, musically unique that that it's going to it's going to influence so much music in the future. So I've been listening to him. Um, I listen to classical music some. Uh, so, and then I love listening to uh, movie soundtracks. Some. Nice. Yeah. Now, I don't know how that influences songwriting, but. Um, but I just get really stuck in like, uh, you know, uh, one song and I'll, I'll loop it for quite a while and, um, analyze it quite a bit. And so I don't, um, I don't listen to a lot of different music, but kind of find myself just digging into a few things. And, uh, you know, if it's like, if I want to hip hop, for example, I really, I, I, I'm kind of throwing this out there and people can probably call me on it later, but I'd love to see, I'd love to be influenced by that more and see that come out somehow. Mm -hmm. um, it, but I know it's not going to happen by me going out and like getting to know every hip hop artist out there. Right. But I think that, you know, what I've seen over the years is if I want something to influence me, if I find a couple of people that really inspire me and just um, dive in deep, then then it'll it'll start to come out mm -hmm. in some way. So I'm hoping for that. We'll see. Yeah. Maybe somebody will notice that in the future. I will, and I'll be your accountability partner. For Thank that. you. Every show that you see me at, afterwards, I'll come up and be like, "Listen, that was that was good. That was fine. But where's the hip hop?" And is your kid brushing his teeth by himself? <laughs> yes. Yeah, you can. Yeah. <laughs> You're gonna regret ever doing this interview. Um, That's fine. Well, I've enjoyed getting kind of um, a taste of how, of what influences you and. Your, your view on the other genres. Let's let's bring it back to you, TJ. Let's get okay. the, the focus light back on you. Um, what what else have you yeah. dabbled with? Um, drums, I think you said. Well, drum. Earlier. I started as a drummer, and that was that was my main thing for a long time. Um, and I really thought I was. Uh, I, I really thought that's kind of where I would stay. Um, but as I started picking up guitar, it was like, well, maybe I could learn, you know, a few other instruments. And then over the years, it's it's become like, this is what I want to do. This is what, you know, guitar is really what, uh, what inspires me more. And, you know, be, I don't know, it's just, there's, I don't know. I just really liked guitar and I liked writing songs and singing. And so as that developed over the years, I just kind of stuck with that. Mm. So I try not to... Um, you know, if I could learn an instrument, the next one I would learn would probably be uh, the piano, because that's a that's a really useful instrument. I think it, I think it's a if you want to be a really good songwriter, if you can play the piano, um, then then that really opens you up a lot more. But um, I don't know. I'd love to, you know, in another life, uh, I'd love to play uh, play a string instrument in a in an orchestra, maybe. Mm. Really interesting, but that's you know, that's a whole different. I love, yeah, I love how, uh, I just love how how orchestras sound and so. Mm. But I, I, I literally like have to live another life to, to <laughs> ever get there. I feel like that that sort of speaks to your lack of ego, <laughs> to be like, you know, like well, you're you're you know front man of a band, but you're like I'd love to be just in an orchestra no with people like your sense of community and yeah, yeah. I don't know that, I yeah. think that's telling of something hmm. 
Well, that's something else that I can check in with you on over the years. <laughs> that's not going to happen. <laughs> in another life. Comes. Well, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe your son will end up dabbling with that. And that's kind of, in a way, another life, you know, living vicariously through That's there. right. That's a good thing to do. Yeah. Yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> That'll be good parenting. Yeah. <laughs> Another dissecting a quote said by you, uh, something I found in my Facebook stalker session, or no, this I think was on Twitter. Okay. Um, you once said that you want to live out days, not moments, and that moments Ooh. are short and infrequent. Um, you know, I'm an artist myself. I can try to unpack that, but I don't want to. I want you to do it, TJ. <laughs> you, you, don't wanna, you don't want to unpack that, huh? I, I feel Why like not? I really... That's like my, that's like my joy. <laughs> Uh, what I was thinking when I wrote that was uh, maybe using the tour bus thing as an example um, I don't want to be I don't I don't want to live my life on a tour bus for the moment of you know uh, of a glamorous show every night because because that's what's gonna end up happening mm -hmm. is days of your life are gonna be spent um, doing nothing yeah you know and so I think that that probably is coming out of that, that, uh, that philosophy for me that like you, you know, we're, we live, we live in a, in a world and in a time where, uh, we, everything, everything we look for, everything we're told, every, every movie or show we watch, if you pay attention to it, everybody is, you know, all that you're seeing really are the important moments. Mm -hmm. You know, and all the stuff in between is is kind of it's like not even there. Yeah. And in in the the underlying message is that the more uh, you know, the more incredible, exciting, and important moments that you can have in your life, um, the more meaningful moments that you can have in your life, the better. But nobody really, nobody can really live that way. Yeah. So what ends up happening is is you spend so much of your life waiting for more and more infrequent moments to happen. Um, and I think it's a dangerous and a vicious uh, cycle and a vicious way of life because you're gonna get older, your life's gonna get more mundane, um, and you've never learned how to just live um, each day. You've only learned how to, um, how to get from one moment to the next, whatever that is. Yeah. It's scary to think about how distant those can be sometimes. Yeah. How much time is lost. Yeah. So. Last thing. Um, I don't know if you are a musical guy or not. And not in the sense of music. Obviously you are. But in the actual, you know, production. Broadway or, you know, musicals themselves. Yeah. Like in film. Yeah. Uh, are you aware of one called Title of Show? I'm not. Okay. Well, <clears throat> this is another one of the questions I like asking people. Um, Title of Show is, is kind of a, a meta musical. It's about... Two guys write a musical about two guys writing a musical. About oh my two gosh. Guys writing a musical. You would, you would, tell, yeah, okay. <laughs> I know so, you well enough to know. That, that I would like that. Yes. So there's a song uh, in it called Die Vampire Die. And in the song, the characters are, um, you know, they, they classify a vampire as any person or thought or feeling that stands between you and your creative self expression. And so they kind of list how there's different vampires and, um, again, the song is just kind of triumphant, like, you know, put a stake in the vampire, get rid of it because they're wanting to be creative and no one's believing in their musical. And so they're, you know, they're moving forward. And so, mm -hmm. um, uh, turning that to you and again, I'll, I'll read the definition again. Um, any person or thought or feeling that stands between you and your creative self-expression with that, is there anything that comes to mind of for you, what you find personally are vampires, things that are getting in the way of your creative self-expression. What's the hardest thing to overcome? Um, gosh, lots, lots of things. Uh, yeah, I think, I think myself is probably the biggest barrier. Um, you know, I think that, that it's really hard to put your heart and your thoughts out there. Um, and have to kind of wonder how people are receiving it and what they're thinking about it. And so that, that when we first started doing this, when we were doing it every Friday uh, with Trees and Houses, um, it was stressful because of that, because we were just like, what do people think about this? And it didn't matter how much positive feedback we got. Um, 
you know, you're, especially for me, uh, I'm, I'm very critical. And, and so I, I need, it's like, I need things to be pretty perfect. So I would, I would say that that's probably the biggest barrier for me is, is, um, I just, I spend a lot of time and a lot of thought goes into everything that I write. And so when it's performed, it's like you have three minutes or four minutes to put it out there. Um, and you want people to get every piece of it, but, uh, but that, you know, you can't, that can't always happen. Um, in fact, that can't ever happen, you know? Um, so yeah, you, you, uh, I think that's the battle is doing something so like serious and important and spending all this time, you know, working on it and tweaking it and then being able to kind of flip a switch and just go up there and share it and let it be and just walk away. Mm -hmm. Um, that's, it's hard to do, but, um, but I think I, yeah, it's you, you, uh, you live in your own head and, and it can be pretty, um, it can be pretty intense if, if you can't find a way to just kind of appreciate, um, that it's out there and not think too much about, um, you know, what people may or may not be thinking about it. Mm -hmm. So that's the biggest thing. And do you think that you've, uh, over the years, like, can you, can you see that you've gotten better in that? Like, oh, can yeah. You see the, and yeah. are there specific things that you, you had to do to, to get that way? Or is it just kind of building up that resistance to, to your own negativity or your own fears? Um, yeah, I don't know. It, it, it's just time. I think it, uh, it's not just time. It's, uh, you, you gotta do, you just, you got to do it. You got to get out there for one and you got to put your songs out there and you've got to play in front of people. And I think that's, that's maybe one of the biggest things. And especially smaller audiences, I think that's actually a benefit. Um, I've, I've intentionally pursued, we've done a lot of house shows, you know, I've intentionally pursued smaller audiences where I can, um, I can see the people and I know who they are. Um, and um, you know, it's not this big crowd that, that, that gives you, you know, it gives you an ego, uh, an ego ejection. And so, so there's nothing, you know, you kind of, kind of move the, the whole ego thing out of the way and, and you're standing in front of 20 or 30 people playing your songs. And, uh, the more you just kind of rep that out and you do it, um, you know, playing in front of two people. I mean, I want to be more comfortable with that than I want to be with playing in front of hundreds. Um, in my experience, it's a lot That's harder, the harder to play thing. In, it is. in front of a small crowd than it is in front yeah. of a big crowd. You know, because you, you guys, we're, we're literally talking about the songs and we're, you know, yeah. so it's like, it's, yeah, I know you, I'm having a conversation and mm -hmm. I can't see what's going on in your head, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's something about, uh, there's a critical mass where I think that your, what you see and what you're thinking changes from individual people to a crowd. And it's just different. You yeah. know, it's, um, it's like walking around in New York city. You don't really think about running into someone, you know, mm -hmm. you know, there's literally millions of people walking around. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. You, you, uh, you just gotta get out there. You gotta do it. I think that's the biggest thing. You gotta be willing to share it with even just a few people at any moment. And at the same time, you gotta really work on your attitude about it. Um, I think that, uh, you know, I think that that your your ego is a really dangerous thing because um, it's 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 going to take you really high and it's going to take you really low, and you can't sustain this if if you allow that to happen over and over and over. Um, and so you just like it's just kind of a both hand. You get up there and you really work on your attitude and um, and you push through some of those sh those shows where. People are not into it. They're not listening, and um, and you just kind of find a reason to keep doing it um, in those moments. And and if you can do that, then you're gonna really love it when you're sitting in front of even a couple people that are that are into it and that are listening and talking about it. And so, um, and that's more that's that's more enjoyable than playing in, in front of a huge crowd, anyways. So, you know, I've done both, and this is better. So. <laughs> We're better, Noah. That's yeah. what I'm hearing. <laughs> nice. Yeah. 
Um, Noah, before I, you know, go to that rapid fire, is there any last uh, stuff that you're curious about or? No, I think that was, I mean, that was a pretty thorough <laughs> account mean, of, of the process and the, the thoughts behind everything. And yeah, I think that was really good. If it was a visual, I, I think it'd be like a, a humble mic drop. Again, I just think like, <laughs> Just boom. setting it on the ground. Yeah, just like, here you go. Like, you're that minimalistic, like it's there. Like I did my job, but uh, you know, we're a community. That's what makes you special, TJ. All right, let's get to the rapid fire. Okay. If, uh, <clears throat> There's two, two uh, if, if you're just like, I don't know, just say skip, and we'll move forward. Okay. okay. I'm not a very quick thinker, so maybe maybe uh, you can splice the rapid part of it Ooh, in later. yes. <laughs> and the audience, you'll have no idea. You can't yeah, trust can. this episode. Just ask the question, and then we'll pause for a few minutes. Do some research. Do some research. One hour later. All right. Here we go. Rapid fire time. TJ, favorite dance move? I hate to dance. Fantastic. Polar bear versus grizzly bear. Who'd win? Uh, probably a polar bear. I like I like the way you think. Nigerian funk, yay or nay? I don't know what. Oh, no. <laughs> on a scale know. of one to ten, how I attractive? Still, I just can't answer that one. <laughs> That's a no, as in pass. Uh, okay, <laughs> that was a pass. Scale one to ten, how attractive is John Mayer? Uh, not attractive. He's a, he's a Dave Matthews. Not, I'm not <laughs> doing star. I'm not doing scales. I realize you asked me a scale. I'm not a what scale am gonna, guy. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I'm not going to do it. This, Except, those questions are very difficult to answer on scales. You hey, know? that's fine. I yeah. can say five. Well, well, you heard it here, folks. It's a five. <laughs> ex ambassadors five or Imagine Dragons? Five is nothing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, ex ambassadors or ex ambassadors. All right. Yeah. Triangle or cowbell? Triangle. Is my hair great or good? <laughs> Your hair? Yes. It's great. Fantastic. How would you feel if Noah got a tattoo of your face? Uh, terrible. Okay. Why do I hate myself? <laughs> Is that for you or for me? <laughs> me. <laughs> I don't know how to answer that. Fantastic. Off the top of your head, bring it back to country, what would be a great country band name? I hate country. All right. We're friends. <laughs> TJ, thank you so much for taking time out of your day. Again, being a father, being a husband, uh, you know, having a job, being a performer, all the different hats you wear. I really don't want to take that for granted. You know, it's hard scheduling. Um, you know, it's hard getting people. And so really, whenever we do, uh, it's it's just, it's really nice. And I appreciate it. Uh, yeah. You're not, you don't get, you're not getting paid. I don't know if people know that. How many fools? They don't he pay. Know <laughs> he knows that. And, yeah. He's like, oh, I thought. Anyway, so I'll have to say, you're guitar. awesome. Yeah. I brought my guitar for you. <laughs> I played for you. Um, you're awesome. Thank you for coming. Thank if people want more of you, which I know they will, where should they go to, to find more of your stuff? Yeah. Um, the website is treesandhouses, treesandhouses.com. Mm -hmm. um, that's been confused many times. Uh, treason houses got it oh, okay. and uh which actually i'm really intrigued by that name we just didn't pick that one so oh, okay <laughs> uh but yeah so trees and houses.com and then uh you look me up on spotify tj williams or uh spotify trees and houses fantastic and Facebook, folks, there's all this stuff. always check out the show notes for direct links if you're lazy or if you, you're just not quite sure with spelling. I don't know why the case here, but, you know, you got it. Um, Noah, thank you as well for joining me. Uh, yeah. It's always fun to have your friend's uh, face across from my <laughs> non-French face. Um, if people want to find you, Noah, where do they go? Um, you can find me on Instagram. It's probably the, the main place that I'll be posting regularly. So, yeah. Fantastic. And because I'm not a selfish uh, butthole, I'm not going to say where you can find me because this was about TJ. Noah? <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> Just joking. I'm very <laughs> egotistical. You can find me on Instagram at Kyle underscore the underscore Ecuadorian. Please check out TJ. And once again, TJ, I hope that you have a fantastic rest of your night. And thank you so much again for coming by. Thank you.